What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another day at the garage. So today we are working on the 73 dent side. Uh, this truck currently is LS swapped with a turbo and Crown Vic front suspension. Uh, I also I also cut the coil springs. Uh, I cut one and a half coils off of it. So it dropped it down pretty nice. Uh, I do eventually plan to run bags on this and the back is substantially higher the truck's on a slope but substantially higher so what i want to do is put some independent rear suspension on it i'd like to have modern day handling and braking and everything like that but i'd like to keep my bed and i'd like to be low so this is all around best option for what i think i want to do this i got from the junkyard out of a 2012 charger um, i haven't seen any dodge chargers used in these swaps mostly the mustang uh, s550 rear ends but i got this for 100 bucks so uh, i'm gonna use it and hope for the best i don't have hardly any money in this truck at all so it won't hurt my feelings if it doesn't work we'll cut it out and start again but today i'm going to start working on getting this axle out and I'm going to get the subframe kind of just rolled under there and mocked up and figure out where exactly I want to get this thing centered and then I'll kind of just make some rough estimates on the frame um, and then I'll get this bed off just so I, I know the wheel is centered in the wheel well uh, before we start any actual cutting. So uh, one quick measurement I took was this truck frame is 37 and like a half inches wide so 37 and a half inches on this puts the edge of the frame rail right there and right there so it's an inch and three quarters past the sway bar mount bracket will you shut up go away go go <laughs> bitch <Back up. laughs> up under there it's pretty much where it needs to be uh, it actually needs to come forward about an inch inch and a half or so it needs to go that way about a half inch but i threw it under there just to kind of see how it look and get a rough idea of where center is and make sure that it still looks center in the wheel well this side needs to come forward actually a little bit more uh, but it's literally just sitting on top of and I got these blocks up underneath it to try and get the drive sh the CV shafts or drive shafts for it at a straight angle and they're not perfectly straight but it's kind of close so this will work for now um, but just sitting how it sits now wheel well to the ground's 30 inches and up front is 25 inches and I planned on oh, coming in and notching the frame to where it sits flush with the bottom of this control arm here, or this uh, mounting, mounting arm. Uh, another thing I noticed in fear was this cross member on the Ford on the frame contacting or interfering with the can the subframe here um according to the bump stop in the axle this thing's got to go forward probably an inch inch and a half like i said before so that should work out just fine to where the subframe fits up into in between the frame rails and doesn't actually contact this cross member so if that's the case i'm probably going to end up just hacking off this whole horn and figuring out how to brace, probably do some sort of gussets from the subframe up to the inside of the frame rail. And I'll probably do some sort of uh, gusset plate along the outside as well. Currently it's only sitting on the front sway bar mount and the sway bar itself. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is run a different style sway bar that either comes behind it it goes to it or in front of it something i'm gonna have to figure out a different sway bar for that 
then I'm going to need to notch a good bit uh, right here for the controller to have movement. And I've got a pretty good amount of real estate in the wheel well for wider tires. I want to run a squared setup. I'd like to have like 20 by 10 on all four corners. Um, so I may end up having to cut out a small portion of this inner wheel well for these things to have proper travel. And um, since it's independent, it's going to obviously go in this angle here. Uh, but uh, that's that'll come later. I'm just doing a quick mock-up right now. So I feel pretty comfortable knowing that that bump stop is center of this wheel well. So what I'm going to do now is get this bed yanked off. So I can kind of get to work, get that thing centered up under the frame and getting stuff cut off that it doesn't need to be there anymore. And when I got some more progress, I will be back. Go. Uh, first thing I started was I got it squared up where I wanted it. And I marked the two things that were touching. So it was this control arm here and this control arm here. I went three inches from the top down made a line and then just basically cut that out so once that i got those set in um it was leaning far back like that and i went through and cut off these the back uh mounts so originally that this cross member lined up right there with that line and I had made that line for a quick referencing getting this thing lined up back and forth a bunch of times uh, but what I ended up doing was coming through and cutting the bottom part of this bracket off and once that was cut laid it back down took a, the paint pen and marked out where I needed to cut raised it back up cut that off the original plan was to have this corner this little horn piece come all the way to the inside of the frame rail just so it puts all that load and uh, focus point into this corner structure um, which would be the strongest I would feel uh, but in order to do that I would need to cut out the bottom of this frame right here and that is riveting for this cross member and I didn't want to do that so I ended up just coming through and cutting it right at the edge of that and this is going to get welded in here um, so that'll work. Uh, I took some quick measurements on the crew cab here, um, just from the frame that still resembled, uh, this frame here. So I took a measurement from right there at the control arm or the, uh, I don't even know what you call that, but right there I took a measurement and then at the front of the hanger and at six inch difference. On this truck which is stock height well it's kind of stock it's got a lowering shackle in the back but it's like a quarter inch shorter in the back than it is in the front so i knew i needed about six inches for this thing to sit level and doing the same rough estimates or rough measurements on this truck it's five inches different so it was like what was it nine inches up there and 14 inches back here five inches um, so that technically would put the rear of this um, one inch shorter than the front with the axles relatively straight. Um, they are still kind of slanted downward, which meaning this should come up a little bit more for that to be, I guess, ride height. I got this thing as low as I could possibly get it. Um, with the frame rail level, the output shaft of the transmission is at six degrees or negative six degrees. And I have this set at negative or positive four degrees. So there's two degree difference and that is acceptable. Um, you don't want, at least from what I've read and seen, you don't want complete zero degree uh, change because it'll end up causing uh, flat spots in the U-joint. But... So I got the pinion set and all I basically did was keep notching up in the frame rail up in here until uh, I got as low as I could get it. 
so that would rock the pinion upwards. Um, and I just kept chipping away at it really slowly and taking a little bit out of time on both sides. And I think the outcome was pretty good. Uh, it's, you know, let's see here. Here's a leaf. So, I mean, I've got really good tolerances on here and here. So that's gonna get welded straight to the frame on both sides. That whole tower will get welded. Um, I've got a nice smooth edge all the way around. I kind of went through and cleaned up a little bit. I still got a little bit more touch up to do. Um, I actually got the little horns that I cut off actually sucked all the way up into the frame. Um, so what I can do is weld those on the bottom and I can weld them on the top and the side. I'll have to build some sort of uh, brace or something along those lines to go in from here to here. Uh, but overall, it worked out great. Um, so just some overall measurements real quick if you're wanting to copy this design. Um, so from this oblonged hole here on the frame underneath the first bed mount, it, um, at least on this long bed, it is 43 and a half inches from that hole directly to the edge of this bracket on both sides. It is seven and three quarters of an inch from the center of this hole to the backing of this bracket that actually comes up and dips in. And originally I was measuring from the bottom, but now I'm measuring from the back side. So seven and three quarters an inch from there. And then it is an inch and a half between the frame and the very edge of the sway bar mount on that cross member. The only um, factor of this thing not going any lower is actually this, I think it's called a tow bar, but uh, this bar right here is actually hitting the frame um, and it's hitting right at those um, rivets for this bracket and the frame, which I wanted to keep to begin with. So I'm not sure, I may, once I get it fully welded, I may come through and notch out this section right here, just so this thing doesn't bang or hit anything if I were to bottom this out. I do plan on running some sort of bag in the rear. Um, so hopefully that should work out nicely. Uh, at this point in time, I've got the frame pretty much level. Um, I had to block up some wood and shim it with some pieces of metal and same with the front. Uh, but overall, it's as square as I can get it with the conditions that I have. Um, I need to actually need to pick up here. This thing is getting pretty dirty out here. I'm starting to trip over all my junk. So um, actually, and also the frame from the bottom of the frame to the ground in front of the hanger is eight inches. Um, and uh, the control arms are a couple inches, but that'll always be the case because I can't move those without cutting them off and moving those, which would mess up the geometry. My only concern at this point is being able to get the bolts out for the diff if I ever need to get it out. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna have to pull the gas tank to do that. Uh, which isn't really no big deal. It's just two bolts there and there, which are still accessible from the other side. Uh, the straps stuck out about a quarter of an inch. I went ahead and cut those off flush with this bracket. Um, so what I may end up doing before I put the bed on, I may pull the gas tank out and run a hole saw through this bracket just so I can get the, <clears throat> just so I can get the bolts out if I ever need to uh, in the future. So I don't have to pull the bed or, you know, nothing crazy like that to get that out. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm gonna do is next, I'm probably going to cut off this uh, little pedestal here. I don't want any extra stuff on the frame or mounts or anything like that. So that's gonna get cut off and I'm gonna run a plate along the edge of this probably from that hole here to probably here. So probably between bracket to bracket, I'll run some sort of like 316 plate 
that mimics the holes of all this stuff and it will get welded over top of that. Uh, I'll build some sort of uh, weld in bracket that will come down here and encapsulate the bottom here and weld to the frame as well. And then I do plan on running some sort of a uh, piece of metal from the top of the frame down along the all side of this just to try and stiffen it as much as possible because the last thing I want is for this thing to rip itself apart um, but yeah that should do it for this video uh, when I got some more progress done I will be back but for now I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you on the next one